What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Married at First Sight edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. It's the one and only Teresa. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We are two days too late, Ooh. but hey, we have a solid reason, guys. We were traveling and working and the schedules just got crazy. We managed to do Darcy and Stacy virtually. Yes. But hey, for this one, this is a big one. And so we decided let's just wait until we are together in person because that's the best. That's how we like it. That's how we get all the energy and all the fun. Energy. Yes. So it's Saturday, guys, and we're doing it. So don't be mad at us. For being a no, little late. No, we, are, we have the but. nicest friends. Nobody ever gets mad at us. They know we're dealing with a lot. They know we're doing 947 shows. <laughs> so I Very think, true. <laughs> I think you guys, you guys know what's up and we appreciate your patience. But yeah, good things come to those who wait sometimes. And I think this is one of those times because this was a maths mess. This was a <laughs> fantastic episode. Always. So much happened. I think it's teeing up a lot, even more to come but we saw some ups some downs some Mm -hmm. ins some outs some tears some laughs it was great so thank you for being patient yeah guys thank you and again this one was great so i'm glad we waited so we can do it together because that's how we get energized energized yes okay so before we get into it a couple little housekeeping items a couple quick things i gotta ask you if you want to follow us on social media you can and you should, and primarily on Instagram at Mary to Reality Pod. Also on Facebook, just search Mary to Reality. You'll find us there. Message us. That's where we post our schedule. If you guys are following us on the Instagram, you saw we were going to be a day or two late. Mm-hmm. If you're not following us on Instagram, you're probably going, "What do they give on? Give up on this show already? You know, two episodes in, they give up on this show. They're not going to release a pod. No, nah, follow the Instagram. You'll get the news. You'll get the memes." Message us. We love talking to you guys. We love chatting with you guys. Always. We we chat with each other all the time, but talking with you guys is the best. We want to hear your thoughts too. We think of this as a conversation, not just with each other, but with you guys. Yeah. We love hearing your feedback, your opinion, what you guys think about these couples and not just about maths, about 90, whatever we cover. So Stacy, your life, your pets, whatever. (laughs) We want to hear about it. We want to talk to you guys. So reach out at Married to Reality Pod on Instagram. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, okay? Because following the social media, that's half the equation. You got to follow the podcast, and you can do that wherever you're listening. Just look down and smash that follow button. Yeah, guys, smash it like it's as hot as this math's mess Woo! because it was hot. So hot. <laughs> so hot. And one more thing before we get into the hotness. Make sure if you haven't left a review, please do. And if you guys just found us because of our maths coverage, you know what? Don't leave a review just yet. Unless you really want to, that's great too. But give it a couple episodes. If you like what you hear, please leave a review. Let us know. If you don't like what you hear, there's about 14 other Married at First Sight podcasts you can go check out. Oh, let us know why you don't like it. Maybe we can improve. That's true. Hey. I'm always here for any criticism. That's true. This is, again, our first time covering math. So let us know what you think, either via review or slide into our DMs. Yeah, do that. Okay. So (laughs) that's the housekeeping. Let's get into this show. Married at First Sight, season 14, episode three. Yes. Let's start with Noi and Steve. And let me just tell you this, right? Before we get into that... As I was watching, I thought this was one of the most genuine reactions on this whole show. I thought the same thing. The way they just laughed and you could see that they were genuinely happy and I don't know, it wasn't fake. And so I thought, wow, this is so special. And then I went on social media. Everyone thinks that. Yeah. no. Everyone thinks that. There was an authentic reaction there. This is... This was a better reaction when they saw each other, their smiles, their emotion. It was more heartwarming than a lot of real weddings that I've been to when the bride comes down. And oh, the groom, yeah. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. I don't I haven't seen this at my buddy's weddings. Mm-hmm. This was a great reaction. And 
it was set up, at least in my eyes, like it wasn't going to be because we saw Steve at the altar and then we see Noi and she was kind of having a little bit of a panic attack. But meanwhile, she kept saying, I'm excited. This is going to be great. So I think she was maybe trying to convince herself of that mm. because I saw real fear in her eyes as she began to walk. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. Maybe. Yeah. I saw fear until she turned the corner and she gets the biggest smile on her face. Listen, I think they look great together. She's very beautiful. He's handsome. They both have big families. You sound like and Alyssa. It's not, there's more to it than looks. There is. However, that's the first thing they see about each other, right? Sure. Before you get to know the person. I'm not saying looks is the most important thing, but it's part of the package, right? Absolutely. So they saw each other. They liked what they saw, and then they started talking, and quickly she realized that he has a good sense of humor, same for her, and they were just vibing, and I loved it. Tell me if you saw this. Steve looked blown away. He looked Mm -hmm. so happy. I thought I saw maybe some tears in his eyes. Maybe. You didn't see that? I didn't, but I can see it. Like, if you told me he was tearing up, I'll be like, yeah, I can yeah. see that. She turns the corner, and I was like, I, Steve, are those tears? Good. Yeah. I like Steve. <laughs> I like Steve. I like Noi, too. That or he's crying because he's like, oh, now I have a job. I'm a husband, and I, I like being unemployed. But, yeah, I thought I saw <laughs> real tears in his eyes, and that made me feel immediately comfortable with this couple. They put me at ease. They felt at ease. It really seemed like they'd known each other for some time. Yes. So, okay. My early favorite of this episode is when we learn Steve's last name. And maybe we knew it and maybe I didn't put two and two together. I didn't know it. No, I don't think I did because I I think I would have been like, oh, wait, what? Noi Moy? That's going to be her name is Noi Moy. Moy, because Steve's last name, if you guys missed it, is Moy. Noi Moy. I like it. Noi Moy. I love it too. <laughs> Has a ring to it. Noi Moy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Noi's family, they want Steve to know a few things about Noisy. She's a little wild, likes to dance, wear wigs, but she's also a hopeless romantic and dreams of seeing the world. Which is great because Steve is adventurous. Guys, he lived in the in the van for four months while being unemployed. Well, I think Was those there two, more I th- adventurous? I think those go hand in hand. I think you live in the van because you're jobless. But listen, I know people who either lost their jobs during the pandemic or their bosses said, hey, you're going you know, work from home full time. It doesn't matter where you are as long as you put the hours in. And I know some friends who literally started traveling the U.S., working on the road, but living in a van. Sure. Or in motels and they're doing it. They're seeing everything. And there is part of me that I wish we did that. But for our jobs, we didn't know when we have to go back, what's going to happen. So it wouldn't work. No. But I wish we had the opportunity. Sure. Sure. Hindsight's twenty twenty. It would have been nice to know, oh, you're going to work from home for this long. Exactly. And yeah. I'm not envious of Steve's position. I mean, I'm happy to be employed. But oh, my gosh. 100%. Uh, he, I would not want to lose ad- the job. He took advantage, I guess, of his situation. Yeah. I'm, I hope he has some savings. Yes. Since he did that. So Steve's family wants Noi to know that. He's a family guy. He's got a big family. He's Uncle Stevie. Uncle Steve is one of those names. Everyone has an Uncle Steve. Oh, we do have an Uncle Steve. Yeah, I firmly believe (laughs) 79% of America has an Uncle Steve. It's the same thing as like everyone knows a Michael. Yeah, well, that's (laughs) less impressive. Everyone knows a Michael. Sure. I mean, it's probably the most common name in the States. But That's why everyone knows a Michael. But Uncle Steve, it's not just like you know a Steve. He's your uncle. I'm saying most people have an Uncle Steve. Call in. Let us know if you have an Uncle Steve. Teresa. You have an Uncle Steve. I don't need you to call me. I'm asking our friends. Let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Put your phone down. We know. We have an Uncle Steve. (laughs) Anyways, family wants Noi to know he's a family man. Uncle Stevie loves to pack up and take spur-of-the-moment trips, which, yes, 
you are afforded when you don't have any other responsibility, a.k.a. a job. Yes, not for now. But again, I know he's going to get to it. But I also feel like he has potential. He did have a decent job. He must have some references, right? So hopefully it's not going to be that hard for him to get another one. Unless it's a situation where he's seen the world now. He's explored the open road. And he's like, I'm never going back to that corporate noose. You're never putting a tie on me again, right? I've been in the wild. I've Ah. been in the van, right? He might be like, you know what? No. I'm going to start a mountain biking tour group or something. Well, whatever it is, he needs a job, as everyone does. And I think he'll figure it out. He seems like a go-getter. Sure. I don't think he seems like a slacker. Like, bleh, like, I'm just No, that's his brother. (laughs) Speaking of his brother, did you see Noe's brother? Yeah. The, The brothers have a lot in common. Well, at least one thing in common. They both have orange hair. I love it. Which is I love it. Hilar- which is probably <laughs> maybe the second reason that maths the experts matched them. It's like, well, they're both family oriented, and their brothers have or- and their brothers have orange hair. So perfect match because about that, that's all it takes these days is a shared hair color. And so you guys are perfect for each other. I loved it. I loved because I didn't <laughs> realize until this episode when they were taking the photos. Yeah, it was great. So then we get to the vows and Noi wrote her own vows. And she said something along the lines of, Steve, I know without knowing you, we're one and the same. I can hardly wait to see how our life will unfold together. And I know the best is yet to come. And if there's life after this, I promise to meet you there too. Very emotional. Why am I crying? Are you crying? Like I was crying. That hit me for some reason. It's a little, I don't know, premature. Noi, to say you're going to meet a stranger in the afterlife, but I admire your commitment to this process. Listen, I liked it. I thought it was good. Oh, it made me, I, I was weeping for sure. So then Steve gives us his abridged version of his vows. And this was interesting. Dear Svetlana, Patinka. Katinka. Did he ask for a Ukrainian? Like That's why? literally, I was like... <laughs> And he said, first I was like, whoa, that's not cool. And then he said, all the names that my family have given you before today. And I guess they were just joking that it's going to be a male order bride. I think that was the idea. And that's why they were like, Svetlana, Katinka, (laughs) you know, Natalia, whatever. Uh, I was like, all all right, I guess. So (laughs) Noi is the name. And he's like, it's nice to meet you. I've been waiting a lifetime to do so. Shout out to Lifetime, the network that brought us together. (laughs) And he's like, I'm going in with an open mind, open heart, the highest of hopes for what I believe will be the adventure of a lifetime. Shout out again to the network who brought us together. Thank you, Lifetime. (laughs) (laughs) I liked it. It was fine. Yeah. It was fine. Straightforward. I hate those vows when they say, oh, I was waiting for you my whole life. It's like, no, you weren't. You didn't know you're going to do this. I mean, Noi had a touch of that. Yeah, but uh, she she fixed it with the afterlife. I like it. (laughs) So then they exchange rings. And there's always got to be one joker. I loved it. Nice touch. Nice (laughs) touch. Steve gives the real ring. And then we see he had a spare ring, which was a ring pop. I loved it. A candy ring, just in case. She didn't like the first one, or so he said. In my mind, he probably thought, oh, shit, we we need to buy rings. I don't have a job. This is probably the only one I can afford. <laughs> he didn't know Lifetime was handing out rings, and so he went to 7-Eleven, bought a ring pop, and was like, all right, I guess this is it. Listen. You know, they what do they say, three months salary? He's like, well, I don't have Really? Them. That's I, what they say? I, Remember, I'm going to do the math. Remember on The Office? <laughs> I didn't follow that rule. Remember on The Office when Michael shows? Oh, my gosh. It's like and, three years. And everyone's like, whoa, I don't think you have to go elaborate with the proposal. I think that's she's going to say yes. He's like, well, yeah, you know, three years salary. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Michael. It's like Michael's going to be living in a van if he spent three years salary on a ring. Oh, my gosh. It was so good. <laughs> so Steve's probably like, well, three months salary. Uh, that's uh, zero dollars, three times zero is zero. Listen, I loved that. I thought it was funny. Man, nah, also it's been done before. It's unoriginal. Really? Oh yeah. Never seen it before. 
Good. You're hanging out with the right people. Also, I don't really go to weddings. I go to your friend's weddings because my friends are not really marrying each other. That's Although true. we're going to go to a wedding this summer in the Czech Republic. However, when I was a child, I loved ring pops. Oh, we all and They did. were so expensive compared to normal lollipops. I thought you were going to say compared to normal rings. No. Like, <laughs> Let's say a normal lollipop was like five cents. Yeah. And this hoe. Yeah. was a dollar. <laughs> so just like imagine there was a lot of money sure. for a lollipop, but I saw the commercials on TV and I was always begging my mom and once in a while she got it for me and I just loved it. No, I fun. loved it so much. It's fun. You're paying <laughs> you're paying for the plastic. You're not paying for the candy, mm-hmm. which is a little bit of a bait and switch. When I buy candy, I want candy, but I liked it too. You Ring- never buy candy, by the way. No, I... I used to eat so much candy. Really? Oh, my gosh. Sucker for candy until I was probably in high school. I used to absolutely devour, mm. devour candy. I guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a savior. Saver? Savory? Savory. You are a savior. You're a savior. <laughs> You're my savior, Teresa. <laughs> I'm more of a savory yeah, All right, kind of Jesus. Person. But once in a while... <laughs> once in a while I have the need for something sweet. Sure. It's usually like when we travel, we do ice creams. But what my guilty pleasure is, mm-hmm. once in a while, it's... um, What did Alexa remind me of to buy? Uh, licorice. Li- yeah, licorice. Yeah. I freaking love licorice. I, uh, yeah, I'm not a big candy person or sweet person anymore, but I was always a fan of the candies that acted like something else. So this was a ring pop. It was oh. like... Ring- Candy cigarettes. Oh you know, my like, gosh. I loved, I used to get a pack all the time from my grandma who mm-hmm. smoked the actual cigarettes. So, so just, I could do the same. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. just puffing. yeah. And then big league chew, which I don't know <laughs> if you're familiar with, No, but it was basically chewing tobacco or it was in a pouch because all the baseball players, you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe still today, I, I think it's banned though, would chew Chewing tobacco yeah. while they're playing. It's not banned. In the MLB, I oh. think it may be. Like in professional sports, I don't know if you can. But so then kids would do big league chew. And it's crazy to think back about it. I mean, we're, our culture has gone sideways now, like canceling things left and right. But that's something maybe we should think about. Is like, why are we having kids smoking candy cigarettes? Why are we having kids I chewing tobacco? They were selling it in an actual puck in the pack in the Czech Republic. Yeah. I freaking loved it. It was like my guilty pleasure when I was a kid. So I was like grandma. Yeah. But it's like people are like, oh, violent video games are going to lead to real violence. I don't know about that, but smoking candy cigarettes when you're seven may lead to smoking real (laughs) cigarettes when you're 17. That's a great point. Yeah. Anyways, we digress as we do. And this is why we got to do this in person. There's way less digressions and virtual records. And we're here for the digressions. Anyways. Okay. They seal their marriage with a kiss. They're introduced as husband and wife for the first time. Pop the champagne. It's time to get to know each other. There was only one part of this that I was like, wait a minute. Eh, What's going on? As they were walking off the aisle or from the altar, Mm -hmm. they didn't hold hands. Oh, really? They did not. And I was like, Hmm. that's interesting. They walked next to each other doing like, woohoo. Yeah. But they did not hold hands. That's interesting. So that kind of struck me. Well, I think the kiss seemed authentic. Yeah. So I'm not bothered by that. I'm not bothered, but I'm just saying they seemed so happy and genuine in the kiss, but didn't hold hands. But maybe they just didn't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Good eye. So good eye, mate. So <laughs> we hear Steve says he's attracted to Noi. He thinks she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then Noi's like, oh, I feel so much more calm now. And she is. They really do seem comfortable together mm-hmm. right from the start. Noi says he's sweet and funny. And she loved during Pobadia because first she thought, oh my gosh, he has another ring for me in case I don't like it. Uh-huh. But the fact that it was a ring pop, yeah. she's like, that made me like him even more. She's a sucker for a good joke. Love it. <laughs> so, okay. Then they go and they meet the families. Everyone's getting along. Everyone's comparing hair dye. Where did you get your <laughs> orange color? What, what number is that? Yeah. And then we get to tradition, the segment. We love traditions here on this podcast. Mm -hmm. We've shared our own. 
and we're getting a lot of traditions this season on MAFs, and we love learning about other traditions. Oh, and, for sure. And here's one we learned about, because Noi comes out in traditional Laotian attire, and she says, it's customary to wear matching colors. So she gives Steve a poppyon, which she explains is worn for celebrations. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hell yeah, put that thing on me. Let's go. It looks like a sash. It, it looks, looks like a napkin you would get at an Italian restaurant. The uh, pattern. Yes. Yes, it, but it's worn like a sash. And so she puts it on him, welcomes him into her family. I loved it. Do we love this couple or do we love this couple? We love this couple. This couple makes me believe in love again. And I really hope they'll make it. We saw some Oh, they won't. They the will not. <laughs> Well, stop it. Someone's got to make it, guys. Come on. We thought they're going to make it. We both said no, they are going to make it. So let's just hope. I'm fingers crossed. Listen, hope's up. Hope's up. Hope's up. All right. Be like our girl Darcy. Hope's up. Manifest it. <laughs> so it's time to party. They share their first dance. They start talking about kids. Steve wants two. Noi wants three. Everyone's crying happy tears in the background. Glasses are clinking. They're trying to get him to kiss. They're trying to get that baby making started. And it's, again, just watching it. You go, everyone here supports it, believes in it, mm -hmm. wants it to happen. Like, is this married at first sight or what? Because we don't get to see this too often. Let me ask you this, right? For all these couples, people did the clinging on the glasses, mm -hmm. like kiss, 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 kiss. Yeah. Is that... A thing? Oh, yeah. Did people do it to us at our wedding? Because I don't remember. No, people at our wedding were yelling, stop kissing. Because we <laughs> we wouldn't stop making out. No, I don't think anyone. I think maybe one or two people did it. Really? I do remember one. Yeah, it's a little, and sorry to say, it's a little cheesy. I yeah, think. I don't recall. So let, let the couple kiss if the couple wants to. Kiss. But people always want to feel involved. People want to get involved in your business and your affairs. Yeah. And this is one acceptable way to be like, kiss. Like, imagine doing that any other time in someone's life. Be like, hey, guys, I want you to kiss right now. It would True. be so creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really call. I, from my wedding, I remember we were sitting and dining. I remember a lot of people were doing speeches, mm -hmm. which was like cracking me up. But some of them. But I don't remember this kissing part. That's why I'm asking. No, I think one or two people may have done it. Really? But yeah. I mean, there. Ah, ah. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't remember. We'll roll the tape back. So they're eating. They're sitting there. And Noi finally asks the fatal question. What do you do for work? What do you do? So the way Steve explained it was good because he made it sound like, yeah, I worked as a sales engineer for four years massive layoff so i thought hey why why not to take a road trip for four months going down the shore all the way to florida visiting friends now i'm back i'm married <laughs> we'll see but he made it sound like it wasn't a permanent situation which no. that's how she feels she thinks he's a go-getter and even though it's it's a little bit like what well, you're getting married and you're jobless yeah. She feels like he, this is just a temporary situation. She says that, but then, and you guys got to pay attention to this because I know Theresa doesn't. Watch the facial expressions. And after she says, oh, you know, it seems temporary. I'm not that worried right now. She does the classic tell. She finishes her line and then she like looks down away from camera and just looks a little sad. And to me, Maybe. that is the honesty. That's transparency right there, is seeing how she really feels as opposed to what she's saying. I mean, listen, I think I believe what she was saying. I believe that she thinks, hopefully this is just a temporary situation, but obviously it must be scary. You just married a stranger. Yeah. You do have a decent job. You are living your life, but you married someone who cannot contribute at the moment. How is that going to work? So obviously she must have been freaked out a bit, but she believes. And she may believe, but on the flip side, maybe I'm thinking if I was her, I would assess the circumstance and say, we're on this television show right now. It's for at least two months. Right? They're getting paid something. They're getting paid something. But 
it's at least for two months. Is he really going to go hit the pavement and try to find a job in the next two months? So that's issue one. Issue two, uh-oh, what if he gets a little Instagram fame and gets a little too comfortable with promoting weight loss tea? And is that going to become his career? Is he actually going to lose his drive to go back to what he used to do and just try to survive off this Insta fame? I tell you what, he's not because unlike 90 days, maths people are not very Instagram famous. They get a couple of thousand followers. No, some have a lot more. I did go back and look. Some well, have hundreds of thousands. The original, what's her name? Je- Jesse. Jamie. Jamie and Doug. And Doug. Well, sure. Of course. But most of them are just living their lives. Most of them got married. That's what they wanted. They have jobs. They're just living their lives. So unlike 90 daters, they don't end up on OnlyFans. Well, right. Maths may be a job. 90 day is a career. Like you can turn mm-hmm. 90 day into spinoff after spinoff and make it into a career. And I think that's what a lot of people on 90 day do. Oh, I think you're right. So I think that's not going to be Steve's career. Although... He doesn't even have the personality for that. If Elijah Wong right. said, oh, I don't have a job now, but maybe I'll try to turn this into some profit, I would be like, you know right. what? I-, I see that. Right. And Steve probably doesn't have great reception in his van, so it's going to be hard for him <laughs> to post photos and stuff. It's just not going to work out. Yeah. I don't even see Steve being like a social media person. No. Maybe he posts when he travels and that's about it. Yeah. So that's that. Then we get like a little quick segment of Steve talking to know his brother and they started talking about sex, right? Yes. I think Noe's brother is grilling Steve about sex and his intentions. And He's literally asking, like, so are you going to bang tonight? Like, TMI. <laughs> like, I get you that you, you bonded over your hair color mm-hmm. or your brother. Because like, he's a brother from another hair mother. Color. Yeah, but TMI, brother. So... It, it was good. I'm hopeful for them, but I've learned never to get too hopeful with these couples. We'll see. But Steve is very gentlemanish because mm. when they get to the hotel, you don't see a lot of happening, but he basically unzips her dress. Yellow. She puts on her nerdy glasses, which I have too, by the yeah. way. <laughs> that's, my, that's my vibe after hours. And he says, you know what? I'm not going to push anything. We have our whole life to mm. do this. And the and- afterlife. And the afterlife. And ghost so sex is so good. He doesn't need <laughs> How do you know? I don't know what that even means. Ever since we got back from <laughs> our vacation, you're just obsessed I'm, I'm with haunted. ghosts. I'm haunted. You are. It's haunting me. <laughs> but anyways, Steve is not going to push anything. I feel like Noi, if she tries, I feel like Steve would bang her. Oh, yeah. Come on. But he's also going to be a gentleman. Well, what, so. Who was it? I think it was Jeffy, speaking of Boston. That like slept on the floor. Yes. <laughs> right. I was going to say most guys, I think, if given the OK, would have sex, at least on their wedding night. Jeff D, my man's on the floor. Speaking of Jeff D and I'm really not good with names. Oh, I'm not good either. But we yeah. remember Jeff D. Yeah. I never thought they'll make it. Um, I never thought. Oh, Shanice. Do. Shanice. Yeah. yeah. I liked Shanice. I thought Jeff D was a nice guy, but I he was Jeff just D. freaked out. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, after he slept on the floor, I was like, there is no way these people are staying together. They have a child now. Because when you take time, as I said at the top of the show, good things come to those who wait. You don't rush it. You build a connection. You actually get to <laughs> learn the person. So you're saying Jeff D sleeping on the floor was a good move? Yeah. <laughs> it may have hurt at the moment and caused I'm concern sure and did. questions, but clearly it's worked out in the long run. I felt so bad for Shanice at the moment when freaking Jeff T slept on the floor. But hey, I know. they are still together. They have a beautiful child. So Look at good them for now. them. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Let's talk about Katina and Elijah Wong. Oh my gosh. I'm starting to feel really bad for Katina because I really <laughs> like her. I think she's a really nice girl with a freaking awesome voice. I went Did back. You pay attention I went to back. It? I listened to the voice. Yeah, I right? like, yeah, maybe it's it sounds like a little it's, bit like me right now because I've been deep, traveling. And, and I freaking love deep voices. Yeah, it makes you want to listen. Yes, and I feel like I wish my voice was deeper. Mm, no, uh, you're, I'm good with that. You think my voice is deep enough? Oh, yeah. It's, oh. Yeah, it's deep enough. Oh, that's good because I love deep voices. I hate my own voice, obviously, as I feel like everyone, everyone does. Everyone, yeah. But I just love listening to Katina. She... She's great. Yeah. So they're taking their wedding photos 
And to me, it seems like Elijah Wan's calming down a little bit finally. He's in front of her. In front of, right, right. He's at least letting her get a word in. She's been allowed to talk mm-hmm. now. And he feels like a new man, like his sins have been forgiven. Oh, my gosh. He's like, I feel loyalty. I'm so vul- vulnerable. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but that's the thing. He talks to her and he's just this little good boy and he's so happy. And then he talks to the cameras and he is Isaac. Isaac. Oh, he... He went full Isaac on the dance floor. Oh, my gosh. And later on talking to his friends. So let's let's get there. So it's party time. They're doing their first dance. They're both loving it, feeling all ushy and gushy, Mm -hmm. as Katina said, except for the hard body that Elijah on has. Everything else is ushy and gushy. And she's like, I feel like I can see why we're matched already. Because they start talking about kids. Elijah on wants kids. But first he wants to travel the world. He's like, so in two to three years, we'll get cooking on some kids. And Katina's like, two years? That's my timeline too. And he Perfect. said, and he said, travel? That's also on my list. And it, it's like with this logic, every Tinder date should end in a happy marriage because that's that's what you get in the bio. It's like, oh my God, she loves dogs and she's 23 and she lives 5.2 miles away from me? <laughs> what, is this happily ever after or what? This is fate. Listen. My thing was when we met, I was like, I just want to travel and have a good time. And I, we didn't even talk about kids. But that's not enough. For what do you mean? A, just because you want to travel and I want to travel doesn't mean we are a match made in heaven. No, that's we're one not. one little but, thing. I mean, we are a match made in heaven. Be connected on other things. Yes. Uh, I feel like the first day we really hit it off, obviously. <laughs> But I'm saying traveling was a big thing for me. And the fact that you love that too, it's great because we are doing it. We're doing everything I ever wanted to do. I just think it is a little funny to be like, oh, I can totally see why we're matched. He likes to travel and he wants kids. It's like, really? Is that it? That's all it takes? That's where I'm saying like, then every Tinder date should be. Good, because you saw their bio. You saw, oh, my God, they like music and art. Perfect. What could go wrong? That's all she's saying is we agree True. on we agree on two things. I can see why we're matched. Listen, she's trying to get her hopes up. Yeah. She just married this guy. So trying to find any connection is good. You that's need true. to. You no, have that's, to. Listen, that's true. If you go on a Tinder date, and we've both been on a few before we found each other, right? You don't hit it off. With everyone, you basically don't hit it off with most people. Most people you don't. So we it's good did to, hit it off. It's good to find common ground. Yes. Just don't get overly excited that you both want to have kids. So your marriage is definitely going to work because we no. both want to have kids. But if you talk about kids and traveling on your first Tinder date, who cares? That is That it doesn't have to be a second one or they may. Right. They're well, married. And here's the flip side. Those may not be things to build a marriage off of or a successful marriage. But if you disagree on those things, well, that definitely ruins the marriage. That would be a rocky start. Right. So it is important to agree on those things, Mm -hmm. but don't just think, oh, because we agree on them, we're good. We're made in the shade. It's like, nah, it's still going to take some work. I'm just surprised how all these girls who are not married, they, they all want to have kids. Like for me, I didn't even think about kids until you and I were solid. It's a little backwards. Yeah. So I've never been like, oh my gosh, I need to find a guy because I want to have kids. I thought I want to meet someone because I don't want to be alone and having your own person is beautiful, right? Sure. And once we got serious to literally we got engaged, that's why I was starting to picture like, all right, so maybe in the future you and I, we could produce something together but I never thought of it before no a lot of people are backwards a lot of people are 16 years old going I can't wait for my wedding and it's like you don't even have a guy like what are you picturing you (laughs) You don't even have a diploma high school (laughs) diploma (laughs) like you're just picturing yourself standing up there you know what what really is driving you to say that are you saying I can't wait to have a family because that I can understand but I can't wait to have an expensive party yeah throw yourself a lavish birthday party is sweet 16 Mm. right okay So everything seems to be going well until Katina mentions she can't cook. 
Well, I almost feel like she's one of the people who she just doesn't like cooking, but she said she can whip something out. Sure. And I feel like everyone can. Come on. I don't believe when a girl says I cannot cook, I don't buy it. Everyone can boil a bowl of pasta and right. put a sauce on it. Everyone can freaking, you know, put chicken in the oven and right. put some seasoning Make on it. Make a sandwich. Yeah. Come on. Like everyone can cook. Some people cannot cook well. And some, some people, people may cannot... not like to cook. Yes. But everyone can make something. Get out of here. Right. So that maybe that's an issue for Elijah Ron because he's like, oh, we're going to learn how to cook. We're going to make sure we figure this out. But he didn't tell her. He, he told, told her, the camera. Yeah. He told her, oh, that's all I need. I just want to eat something. Right. And he told the cameras, well, all right, we got to have to learn how to cook. Right. Make it a, make it a, an event you do together. Yeah, do Blue Apron or something. Do Blue Apron. Make it exciting. It doesn't have to be seven nights a week. Whip something up. Have a glass of wine. You're cooking. The music's playing. Mm -hmm. It becomes fun if you look at it in terms of an experience, not in terms of, oh, I have to make dinner tonight. True. Like whenever you cook, or not whenever, but a lot of the times when you cook, we try to make it more than just you cooking. Yeah, you, you sit next to me, or next to me, you sit at the kitchen yeah. island. We'll chat. And we chat. We'll play some music if it's the weekend or Monday through Friday. We'll open up a bottle of wine. Yeah, I'll we make have, some guacamole. We have a good time. So I think you got to look at it more as an experience than a chore. Yes. So, okay. Then Katina goes to meet Elijah Juan's friends. And she's given them the rundown of her life. And she asks if Elijah has any bad quirks and did you notice she called him elijah i did not this couple but he called her katrina well so. that's later <laughs> but yeah this couple cannot get their spouse's names right and i like the name elijah that works and i wonder if he said you can call me elijah because she was butchering his name in the beginning honestly elijah one is not that difficult to you pronounce. learned it in one episode like people cannot pronounce my name which sometimes is mind-boggling because it's very easy Ah, it's too similar to an American name. True. So people just automatically call you Teresa, the yeah. American version. A lot of people learned, but I feel like Americans cannot roll the R. Mm. So you, the way you say it is as good as it can be. Teresa? Yes. Yeah. You basically say it. You just don't say, you don't have the check R. But say if you it, did. Say it properly. Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. Well, you're saying like the song that you're named after. Teresa. Teresa. It's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa. Yeah. So but yeah. It's, maybe it's a nickname and he said, call me Elijah. Maybe. But I, I picked up on that. What I didn't know was that she said, oh, I work nine to five. I'm done with the party scene. And she said she works as a retirement place for the state. Yeah. I think she, we said she's like a benefit analyst, but I think she works for retirement. I mean, she could be doing retirement plans or packages or analyzing for state employees mm. because Elijah Wan's a state employee. What does he do? I forgot. He works. I want to say he's it's municipal something. I know I have it down. Oh, a wastewater operator. Oh, OK. OK. So I think he works, you know, for the water plant or whatever yeah. it is. Um, but so they both work. For the city. Okay. Well, that's good. And they have that in common, which is good. But she asks, is, is there anything I should know about Elijah? And his friends go, you may need to explain something two, three, four times before he gives you an honest answer. Oh, my gosh. What? Like, <laughs> so where were you last night, Elijah? Uh, the library. I said, where <laughs> were you last night, Elijah? <laughs> the gym. No. Where were you last night? Oh, I was just working late. Okay, well, that was three. Um, one more time. Where were you last night, Elijah? Ah, four times, not four times. Okay, I was at the strip club. I was at the strip. Why did you have to ask me four times? You know I always am honest on the fourth time. <laughs> oh, that would annoy me. That's crazy. That his friends even say that? Oh, you got to ask him like four times before he tells you the truth. Oh, my gosh. I could not deal with a person like this. And. You are the exact opposite. John is very honest. Too honest. Very straight, straightforward. And sometimes he's too honest when it comes to my fashion. Because <laughs> I love Zara and sometimes they sell these crazy wild outfits that mm -hmm. I buy. 
And then John makes comments and I get mad at him for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, call me old fashioned, <laughs> but I think you should be dressing for me. Right. And I should be dressing for you. Like I want to dress in the clothes that I like. Sure. But I'm not dressing for my guys. I'm not dressing for other girls at the bar. I'm dressing to make you happy and you attracted to me and you, I feel like, should want to make me. Yeah, but you like when I wear jeans and shirt. Yeah, I make it easy on you. I like dressing up a little. I know, but I make it easy on you. I'm like, don't even do your makeup. Put on jeans and a t-shirt and let's go. Like, you look great like that. Oh, thank you. Right? I make it easy for you. It'd be way worse if I was like, get in there, put on your makeup, put on a dress, put on some heels or not going to dinner. Well, that would we wouldn't be married if you were like this. Exactly. But I like dressing up. I love putting on some makeup once in a while, doing my hair. So yeah, that's okay. I, and I like it too. But I am a little honest. All right. Let's talk about my favorite part oh of this boy. whole episode because I freaking died laughing. There, can we just say the editing, at least on Elijah Juan's segments, are so good. So good. Because it's funny no matter what. But the way they edit this is delightful. Love it. So Elijah Bourne is going to talk to Katina's mom, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And Katina's mom, I don't think she's very thrilled about him. Okay. Because she's like, all right, so what are your intentions with my daughter? Hold on. Don't bury the lead. Mother like daughter moment here. She's like, what's your name? How do you say your name? (laughs) Right? She can't say his name either. She's like, who came up with that name? And he's like, uh, my mom. I th- didn't he say his mom is Irish, but this is a Nigerian name. So maybe that his I know dad it's a is Nigerian. Nigerian. I, I didn't hear the Irish part, but I did hear him say I it. think I did, but I might be wrong. Don't hate me. I just think it's hilarious that like mother, like daughter, neither of them understand or can say his name. They'll get there. Oh, yeah. But anyways, she doesn't seem... A- to be a very fan of Elijah Wan because she's like, what are your intentions with my daughter? Mm-hmm. And this just cracked me up because Good Good Elijah Wan went full Elijah Wan and he just did not shut up. Well, we learned he has ADHD. Yes. And his mom's like, you have meds? <laughs> He's like, and that's when. Want to share? And that's when. <laughs> yeah, that's when he goes full. Elijah. He's on. like, I don't have a lot of friends, maybe like two, highest GPA, ADHD. On my entire and football I- team. I don't even know what handcuffs feel like. <laughs> Did <laughs> and, he say that? Yeah. Oh my God. And mind you, the whole time he's saying these things, it's like a mosaic. It's like the Brady Bunch. And they just keep putting up squares of him talking on the screen. It's ridiculous because I watched this whole segment like three times and I didn't get most of it because I just kept laughing. Oh, my God. Yeah, everything you said, it just bested. The highest GPA on my football team. Don't even know what handcuffs feel like. It's like, what are you talking like, about? I don't have a lot of friends, maybe like two. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, his opening segment, he's sitting there with his entire family and friends. Yeah. <laughs> but Strippers aren't friends, Teresa. I know they want you to think they are. You have to pay for them. True. It's like Jovi all over. <laughs> but. Then the moment. The moment. Mom is literally, her head is spinning. Hold on. Don't skip this part either. When he calls Katina Katrina. Oh, that's right. This is what it happened. I and mean, it's fair. Both both of these people are terrible with names. True. But that's... Right. That's what stops his litany of all of these, I don't know, accolades he's giving himself. He's like this and that and this. And I, I know Katrina is going to... And she's like, wait, what? Her name's Katina. It's my pet beef. Yeah. his. <laughs> he should have said, who came up with that name when... I like it. No, I know. But that's how she... Oh. responded to his, what's your name? Who came up with that name? <laughs> when she was like, her name is Katina. He should have been like, who came up with that name? And so she stopped him, but she's like, I, c- I cannot freaking listen to this anymore. So she looked, she's like, oh, what's that? A rabbit? And she walked <laughs> away. <laughs> Elijah and Wan, died laughing. Elijah Wan turns to look to see. And when he turns, she gets up and leaves. <laughs> Savage. I love this. Savage. Yeah, it was hilarious. It's like, oh, what's that rabbit? And she's out. Was there a rabbit? I don't think so. I don't think there's just rabbits bouncing around in August at the Museum of Science (laughs) in Boston. I mean, there are rabbits in New England. Oh, for sure. But I don't, 
I think she was just like, oh, uh, okay. She I was start? trying to get out for oh, sure. Right. And it reminded me of Jesse and the goat. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, a goat. <laughs> well, that was great. Yes. So then we cut to Elijah, I mean, sorry, Isaac stripping on the dance floor with mom watching very closely. She did not like that either. No, and who's, come on, man. <laughs> like, what are you doing? This is your wedding. Family's there. Your shirt's off. What's happening? What's happening, Isaac? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was not good. That was not good. <sighs> so then Katina is with her friends talking about the sex timeline. And she's like, mm, maybe a month. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll wait a month. If that's the case, you better be okay with Elijah going back to the strip clubs. Yeah, because he's like, I'm ready to dive in. If my wife wants me to flip her upside down and do crazy shit to her, I'm ready to do it tonight. Yeah. I don't know what handcuffs feel like, but she's going to know what they feel like tonight. Because <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I'm going to tie her up. <laughs> like, they need to get on the same page about this. But he thinks that that's the vibe she's giving him. Yeah. Read the room. Meanwhile, he's Isaac. doing this trip these right he's oh my god i think this is gonna be a disaster right no, okay here's the disaster they get back to the hotel all i saw was elijah on stained boxers oh my gosh like did he legit shit his pants when he saw katina because he he takes off his clothes of course and he's just got these stains on like the side and mm -hmm. back of his boxers yeah i don't know what if are we doing anything, here he should have bought new pair but that was disgusting yeah and that was it. <laughs> I got you a new pair of boxers for our wedding. Oh, we had matching underwear. Yes, with dinosaurs. What brand was that? Because they're so comfortable. Oh. Me Undies? Me Undies, yeah. Shout out to Me Undies. Not a sponsor, but not a sponsor. Very comfortable. Very, underwear. but they're expensive. But yeah, you can get yeah. matching undies. We got matching undies, little cute dinosaurs, because Teresa's obsessed with dinosaurs. <laughs> and I was like, well, if I put these on, she's definitely going to want to rip my pants off so she can see these underwear. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wore. Loved it. Stain free. <laughs> no stains. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is Elijah Wan and Katina. I say we take a quick break and we'll be right back with the other couples. And we're back. With Lindsay and Mark the Shock. Mark the Shock. I love Mark the Shock. Mark the Shock. <laughs> <laughs> They're at the reception. Lindsay being mouthy as usual. She's still drunk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no signs of sobering up anytime soon. I mean, she keeps drinking, so you're just feeding the beast. Feed. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay the Beast and Mark the Shark. Mark the Shark. The glasses are ringing. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Everyone, Everyone's doing Everyone it. wants a show. Everyone wants a show these days. But Lindsay feels great. Never met a stranger she doesn't like, and this is no different. Because Mark the Shark works hard and is very focused. Yeah. And he said, people's been calling me Mark the Shark since high school because I'm a go-getter. <laughs> Mark the Shark, yeah. <laughs> Friends call me Mark the Shark since high school, college. Mark the Shark, I go to the gym hard. Mark the Shark's here. I tan hard. Mark the Shark. Wherever I go, <laughs> Mark the Shark. They call me. Hey, Mark the Shark's coming. Here he I comes. I love it. No. <laughs> I still can't get over He named himself Mark the Shark. No, nobody, he didn't. Nobody said, Mark, you work so damn hard. You work everything you do, you do so, so hard. We're going to call you Mark the Shark. And if someone doesn't call you Mark the Shark, I'm going to talk to him for you. Okay? The only time that I feel like it's a little eh, when she calls him Mark the Shark, when she goes like, I married a man whose name is Mark the Shark. MTS. I married MTS. My husband, MTS. Love it. I'm Mrs. MRS. He's MTS. Mark the Shark. <laughs> I can't stand it. They're both hyperventilating slash talking. Can you imagine when Mark, Lindsay, and Elijah on get together oh on the gosh. honeymoon? Nonstop talking. I don't think the three of them can be friends. It's going to be too much talking. Too much. <laughs> too much energy. Did you hear when Lindsay's like, there's so many losers out there oh my that don't deserve someone like me. And she's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. What happened, fuck you. What happened like, to never meeting a stranger you don't? You don't like. But she said it like five minutes before or after. I can't remember. But you could see Mark the Shark's face when she started saying the F word. And oh he was gosh. just like, oh, my gosh. Like, what did I met it into? Uh -huh. <laughs> so Mark breaks away. He's going to go talk to Lindsay's dad and brother. 
And he was like, never thought I'd find someone as loud and as outgoing as me. There's loud Lindsay. I'm waiting for lovable Lindsay. He, I'm telling you, he's the nickname guy. He's given out nicknames. He gave himself the nickname. Now he's like, is it going to be loud Lindsay or lovable Lindsay? Well, he wants to see the Lindsay when the sun goes down. <laughs> when the sun goes down, she's just going to finish all her alcohol work. and it's going to be out of control. It's going to get worse. And her dad's like, oh, she's she's very kind. Um, she sees she sees homeless people and she'll buy them lunch. Uh, that's that's about it. That's all I can think of. It's like what? That's your one anecdote? <laughs> oh, she's very kind. Uh, she she once probably bought, gave him notes. Yeah, she once bought a homeless guy a sandwich. She's like oh, that. That's it. That's all you have to say. I found it so funny that he gave this one big story, <laughs> this one big grand gesture. And yeah, that's about it, actually. You know what? On second thought, it was actually my son who did that. It wasn't <laughs> even Lindsay, now that I think about it. Oh, my gosh. It's too good. But <laughs> Mark is feeling the love. He is asking for a permission because he said that's something he wanted to do before. But obviously, he didn't know who he's going to marry. Yeah. So <laughs> her dad's like, just, just have her back. Yeah, I think asking for a permission is a big thing. I think it's important. Obviously, these guys cannot do it. But I do like that he kind of brought it up. Yeah, and I wonder if he tried to do it and asked production, hey, can I get his number? Because I'd like to call him. Because he said, I wanted to call and ask for permission. But he didn't. So maybe production's like, nah, if we give you the number, yeah. you have to figure out yeah, who yeah, Lindsay no. is. Mm -hmm. You'll look her up on Facebook. You'll never want to marry her. Like, we can't <laughs> can't do this. So, yeah, he has to do it there. You loved when I asked your dad for permission. I loved it. I think it's very important. Forget that we don't speak the same language. It, it was beautiful. It didn't stop me from messaging him. And what, it, oh, man, I wish I could remember what it was. Don't you still have the message? Should I should I read it? I don't know. It's very Let personal. Me. I don't think you should read it. It's something we gonna okay. cherish between you, my dad, and myself. And and Google Translate. <laughs> and Google Translate. Because I but googled what I wanted to say, translated it, sent it to him. I think he did the same. He wrote it in Czech, translated it, and sent it to me. And it was sweet, mm -hmm. but not as sweet as the time he told me to enjoy my blowjob. <laughs> I it was can I read birth. that one? I think I can read that one. If well, I, can find, I forget how that even started. It was your birthday. You mm -hmm. you are a pie baby. Three one four. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Oh, here we go. Oh oh oh! No, it makes complete sense. Yeah, he messaged me on March fourteenth and wrote, "Dear John, <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, happy blowjob and steak day and pie day." Enjoy it. Those are all the days. Every, so, all of this is happening on the 14th. Yeah. If you guys don't know, February, well, you guys know February 14th is Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. which I guess people think as of uh, a female holiday, which is yes. not. But so then some creep created <laughs> blowjob and steak day on March 14th. So a month <laughs> later, they, you know, the guy gets his day. And so I guess your dad just Googled March 14th. Uh -huh. I think so, too. I didn't ask him about it because it would be an uncomfortable uh, conversation. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy that BJ <laughs> from my daughter, John. <laughs> but isn't not. it sweet that it's you so thought sweet. of it? Oh, I love. Yeah. I love that he gave me permission. I, Guys, if you saw John's face and he got the message and he didn't even read it, he looked at me. He's like, did you tell your dad what to tell me for my birthday? And I'm like... No, why would I tell my dad? Like, he can write happy birthday. He can write a lot more than happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the best things ever. I just wrote back. I was like, thanks. <laughs> thanks, dad. <laughs> <laughs> High five. But you love my dad. Oh, more now than ever. <laughs> okay, let's cut to Lindsay. She's rambling on with her friends about Mark the Shock, talking about his <laughs> nickname and wondering... If it transcends to the bedroom. Well, she's talking to his friends. Oh, Those his girls are his friends. Okay. I think you're right. And, and so asking, does Mark the shock, is he a shock in the bed? 
Is he a shark between the sheets? And she started doing the shark. Okay. <laughs> when you put the hand on your head, like... Jaws. Let me just say, if it does translate to the bedroom, he probably loves to bang during that time of the month. Oh, come on. Sharks are attracted to blood, Teresa. Come on. Not the sharks attracted to blood. That's all I'm saying. Too far. That's all I'm saying. Hey, she started it. She's. It's all good as long as there's no guppy lips. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my oh, gosh. All right. Bad. Moving on. Moving too on. Bad. Let's just be glad the show is not on Discovery Plus because we know how dirty Discovery Plus gets. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> yeah. They get back to the hotel and I think Lindsay realized she went too hot. I went too hot at the wedding because she pours water into her champagne glass. She goes, I'm too tired to drink champagne, which is a sentence I never thought she would say. Probably a sentence she never thought she'd say. No, but did you see she asked Mog the shark to unzip her, but she was so drunk that she was trying to hold her boobs, but you could see you could see a lot more. Oh, no, I need to go back. You could I see didn't... her butt crack. Oh, hello. And kind of like a big side boob. I didn't see any of this. I don't think they showed the neighbor or anything, but I'm pretty sure Mog the shark got the view because uh-huh. <laughs> she was just like when you, when you're drunk and sloppy you're just like, like oh for sure yeah. and she was drunk and sloppy but yeah she took her makeup off and went to bed they threw off the pedals laughing and who knows what who happened but knows? we're gonna find out maybe on the next episode did they go to work on a baby shark oh who knows okay let's move on let's talk about jasmina and michael who are at the reception, eating dinner. Again, glasses are clinking, couples kissing. Michael's chewing gum. Like, how do you good. eat and chew gum? That's a good question, but I appreciate him thinking about his breath. Yeah, but don't chew gum and eat. Right, and do it after you eat. Like, your breath is going to mm-hmm. stink from the food. Also, don't chew gum. Have mints. Because then what sure. do you do with the gum? Sure. I, th- he's, I think he's a pro when it comes to gum. If he's chewing and eating... Come it's on. disgusting. I can't even think about it. Come on. So Jasmina asks the hard questions. Michael, are you a pet lover? <laughs> and he is. Loves the pets. But with his busy schedule, it'd be hard at least to have a dog. He's up at 4 a.m. And he comes home at 7.30. This is a hard even working on man. The, didn't he say even on the weekends? So 4 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Okay. okay. I'm exhausted just saying that. On the weekend, he's like, I'm a little more free on the weekends, but still have some clients. That's a lot. Listen, oh, he, that's too much. he works and work is good. I appreciate a hard worker, but 4 a.m. till 7.30 p.m. is absolutely nuts. Here's the thing. And I don't think I've ever had a trainer. You have. I did. You did it. But I get the starting early and working late because... Most people have nine to five jobs. That's so true. So he probably gets to the gym at 4.30, mm-hmm. has to train people from 4.30 to 8.30 so then people can go to their job and then probably works people from five to seven. How much he's working at 2 p.m., I don't know. Maybe he, maybe his clients are morning and night. I guess it makes sense. Some people, do, so when I was an au pair, I was basically on the schedule because kids were in school, right? Sure. So I worked... Usually 7.30 till 9.30, basically woke up, prepared the kids, dropped them over at schools, right? And then I was off until like 3, 2.30 or 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So before I started college, during that time, I had nothing to do. So I usually go to the gym. Uh, a lot of moms. Uh, a like lot moms. of moms. And I Uh-oh. listened to them and it was out of control. But the gym was pretty full. But a lot of women. So so here's the thing. Jasmina wants someone who's going to make her a priority, right? And he may not physically have time to do that. Even if he does have some free time during the day, she's got a job. Mm-hmm. So they can't spend time there. And then as you just said, he's going to be spending a lot of time with women. Mm-hmm. That could be an issue. Well, I mean, it's his job. Um, what oh. do you do? When I when I had my trainer, we were a group of like four or five. I mm-hmm. was the only girl, and then there was like one older wo- woman who joined, but the rest were guys. Yeah. 
Um, but we didn't talk. I literally didn't know those people. We got there and it was like, okay, you start here, you start here, you start here. Yeah. No idea who those people were. I'm just saying, if you are a one-on-one personal trainer mm. and you're going to be in some situations where maybe they're not wearing very many clothes, they need some help, you're touching their body, like it could get a little sexual is all no, I'm saying. No one's touching you. Ah, okay. I'm not saying in your situation. I'm saying there is opportunity. Okay. For touching, right? It could become an issue. Okay. That's all. It could become an issue. I I can see that. Okay. Especially if time becomes an issue. I never see you. You're always at work. And then on top of that, you're working with moms, hot moms. (laughs) You know, it could become an issue. I have to say most of those moms that I saw at the gym were ripped. Yeah. Because they're stay-at-home moms. What do they do when the kids are at school? Just work it. Listen, I'm not saying stay-at-home moms are not doing a great job. Hard work too. Believe me, taking care of kids, it's a freaking hard work, oh, right? Yeah. But they do have some time and they all were just ripped. Yeah, good. I mean, at least they're <laughs> taking advantage of that time. Mm-hmm. They could be sitting home watching Oprah. True. Or whatever. Try Price is Right, although it's not as great with Bob Freaking Barker, I love Price is yeah. Right. So okay. at least they're in the gym. True. Okay. So then Jasmina goes over to Michael's sisters to talk. And they're telling Jasmine to be patient, show him love, and then we get sweetness. New segment, sweetness, the segment, okay? Because they tell Jasmine about losing their mom, Mm -hmm. and they give her one of the breast cancer awareness pins. Yeah, that was beautiful. It was so sweet. It made Jasmine feel like she was welcomed into the family. She's part of the crew now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just a little bit of new segment, sweetness, the segment, I... Loved it because it was a genuine moment and you could see like, oh, wow, they're welcoming her in. They care. That might be a conversation you would have once you get to know someone, but they feel comfortable enough to let her in right there Mm -hmm. and tell her. So I loved it. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah. And they're like, it was Mike and the girls for the longest time. Now it's Mike, his wife and the girls. So yeah, the the gang got one more, one more member. I'm curious to see now if... Jasmine and Mike are going to make it. I wasn't very hopeful last time. Now, maybe, maybe. We'll see. Okay. It's way too early to tell. Oh, my gosh, it is. But I thought that she wasn't very thrilled on the previous episode. On this one, I feel like she's warming up Mm -hmm. to him a little more. So It's natural. It takes time. Let's see. So Mike goes to meet with Kimberly and her husband. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Um... I had to read the subtitles. I couldn't make much sense of this segment. No. But basically, long story short, Jasmina needs to communicate. Quiet is no good. Mike needs to know how to communicate with Jasmina. And I think Mike said it before. He's not the best communicator. Right. So this might be an issue. That could be an issue. Yeah. So then they get back to the hotel. And my only note was, did you see all the balloons on the floor? I did not. Like that's... Different. I love balloons. Yeah, but on your wedding night, like I get the rose petals. I mean, I don't. To me, it's cheesy, but I get the intention of the rose petals. It signifies romance. But why? It looked like New Year's Eve in the hotel. There's (laughs) 94 silver and black balloons on the ground. Well, they each had a different send off. Oh, that's true. The only real send off. I noticed was this next couple. Oh, all the others, yeah. all the others seemed pretty. Yeah, some standard. had. I think some had the sparkles. Some had the. What do you call it? You throw that. I think you throw rice. I don't think anyone was throwing rice. They were throwing those like party thingies. Sure. I don't even know what to, I seriously don't know what to call. Yeah, it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, hey, I just balloons. meant the hotel room. You walked in, the floor was covered in balloons. I didn't see that. It's not a birthday party. Our floor was covered in ghosts and their clothes. I thought you were going to say something else. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was I going to say? No, you nailed it with clothes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's join we move on? Because woo-wee. Woo-wee. The one and only. Woo. The one couple we were all waiting for because we saw the drama coming without even seeing the previews. Oh, my goodness. It's Alyssa and Chris. The final couple to get married so start from the beginning Alyssa's at the hotel 
She's in bed with her bridesmaids and she's like, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. And here we go. The cheer that they do, the cheers they do. And I don't mean like a uh, drink cheers. Oh my God. A chant. Like they want Chris to be hot. <laughs> right. They want him to be good. That's where the priorities are. Is all about physical looks. And again, physical attraction is important. But everyone has a different taste. It's important, but it's not the most important. No. However, it's the first thing you see. And I agree with you there, but they're not talking about seeing each other. She's saying, I hope he's hot. Not, I hope he's kind. True. I hope he's funny. True. I hope he loves pets. Yeah, because those are all things. A too. big thing. I'm totally on your side when you turn the corner and walk down the aisle, and you can give the first impression. Oh, I'm attracted to her, or I'm not. Yeah. But when you're laying in bed, writing up your dream guy, and she's like, "Here's to him being hot. I hope he's hot. He better be good looking." It's like there's some other things you should be wishing for mm-hmm. because That's true. I those agree. looks will fade. Hope for some other things. I agree. So they're getting all done up. And Alyssa says, I want this process to work. I'm putting my faith in this process. I want it to work, but I'm going to be realistic. I know the odds. I know there's 30% chance of success here. She didn't say the actual number, but she knows, Mm -hmm. right? So then we see Chris at the hotel with his guys. They're getting ready, talking about big spoons and little spoons. But he's confident that it's going to be a great match. Oh, Chris. Just, just wait a minute. Oh. Just just wait until you meet your bride, Chris. Yeah. So we finally get a gift exchange, kind of. It was, it was just a note, wasn't it? Was, it? It, was, it was a one-sided card exchange, right? Chris sent Alyssa this card. She didn't send anything to him, I don't I, think. At least we didn't see. Right. So Alyssa gets this card. She reads it and she starts crying. And everyone's like, oh, he's so nice. He's so sweet. And, and she keeps saying she hopes that she'll like what she sees at the altar. Exactly. The, he, she literally says, the only thing I hope is that he thinks I'm cute and I think he's cute. That's the only thing you hope? Yeah. Listen, she says, oh, I don't want to find a boyfriend. I want to find a husband. I thought by now I'll be at least engaged, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. So you want all this, but at the same time, you just want someone hot. Right. Well, then just go to a bar and find a hot person. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, find the next hot person. It's like, (laughs) this is the least successful way to find a hot person is a blind marriage. And also, she's not that hot. Like, I don't think she's that good looking. She's She's attractive. She's attractive. No, she's not. She's an average looking girl. But what makes her less attractive is her personality. So she thinks she's like 10. Right. Trying to look for someone who's 10. But it's like, no, A, you just are crazy. And B, that's not what you should be looking for in a forever person. Sure. Yeah. No, but she's not unattractive. She's average. But she portrays herself as, oh my gosh, I need a hot person because I'm hot. Right. It's like, uh, but again, as just you reality said, check. But again, as you said, hot is all relative. True. She said, I hope I find him attractive and I True. hope he finds me attractive. So that's all relative. She's not saying, oh, I deserve Brad Pitt. I got to update my references. I always go Brad Pitt. <laughs> when I, I don't know who the young, hot TikTokers are these days. Everyone has a different type, but, but that's Brad Pitt she's is not like, like the standard. She's not like, I deserve Bradley Cooper. You know, she's saying, I hope he finds me hot and I hope I find him hot, which is sure. Of course you yeah. should. My issue is that she puts that first and foremost. That's all she puts it's out a, there. It's the one and only. So then her parents come in, they're getting a little emotional and this is where we learn she's going to walk herself down the aisle because her dad has had a lot of back surgery. I mean, I get it, but the aisle is not that long. Aisle's not that long. I didn't see him with like a cane or a walker or anything. As a comparison, our aisle was freakishly long to the point that your grandma couldn't even walk it because he was so far. Well, she had a walker. Yes, but she didn't walk it. No, I know, but I'm saying, yeah, yeah, that made sense. But Alyssa's boots were made for walking. So walking's what they'll do. Yeah, she could have walked slowly. I feel like 
nah, she could have had her dad. I mean, I don't know. We don't know. We don't. We really don't know. He could, but he's there. He seems mobile. He's upright. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there was another reason. And maybe he's got, and here's the reality of it. Maybe he does have a very slow walk or not the most graceful walk. And he doesn't want to show that to the world. Maybe he's a little Mm -hmm. self-conscious of it. Maybe. Let's go with that. So, okay. It's go time. Chris is at the altar. And it's always a bad sign when the friends and family just kind of sit in silence. There's no, oh, he's cute. Oh, she's going to like him. Oh, if she doesn't like him, I'll take him. Like, they just sit there in silence while he's up there. But Alyssa's friend Carly is literally a younger version of Darcy. Oh. She's a motivational quote indeed. Oh. I didn't pick up on that. Oh, I sure did. But before Alyssa walks down the aisle, she keeps saying... She's huge on teeth. Mm-hmm. Huge on teeth. Her teeth are white. Yep. Although her teeth are not that straight. So, I mean. They're she, blindingly white, though. They're white. I mean, everyone can whiten their teeth. Come on. Sure. But so, she's like, yeah. if he has bad teeth, I'm done. Is there a dentist in the room? Right. Again, if you're this concerned about a physical appearance, maybe a blind match is not for you. Yeah, plus she doesn't love the cameras either. Do you even know what you signed up for? Right. And we saw a little bit here and we saw on previews. She's far too aware Mm -hmm. of the cameras. She's like, I don't want this to be on the camera. Obviously, it is on the camera. That's all we want. (laughs) That's why we're tuning in is to see this. We're not just want to see some happy couple. Oh, We want to see the drama. And the producers are savages because they are showing it all. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Everyone stands. It's time. Alyssa comes around the corner and Chris is big smiles. Mm-hmm. Alan is crying. Father Alan. He's got some tears in his eyes. Alyssa's crying, but those don't look like happy tears. Was she crying? Mm-hmm. I she didn't was, see it. She gets to the altar And she breaks the tension a little bit by showing her boots off. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, look at these. She still looks repulsed, though. I think she's one of the, she has the personality who likes to flex. Oh, yeah. She thinks she's better than everyone. She flex. Yes. And I cannot stand people like that. I've met people like that in my life. We're definitely not friends, Mm -hmm. not even friendly. Because I can't, I cannot stand people who think they are better than everyone else. And who need to make everything about them. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, you went to Montreal last weekend? I went to Montreal five years ago, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I was telling my story. It's not all about you. Mm -hmm. So we get into the what the families and friends want each other to know. Alyssa's friends and family want Chris to know he is incredibly lucky. She's a straight shooter. <laughs> we'll have no problem telling you what's on her mind. She's honest, forthright, sometimes too much so. And you'll be able to tell if something's bothering her because her face says it all. Now, Chris, I'd like you to take a look at her face. <laughs> look at that face. Right. Something is bothering her. <laughs> and we can hear it because she speeds through her vows. Oh, my She's like, God. Blah, 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 blah. No excitement, yeah. no voice changes, no pauses. She literally speeds through it. Yeah. So, all right, let me talk about the vows because they wrote their own. Chris is like, big risks, big risks often lead to life-changing rewards. I vow to bring adventure, excitement, and joy to our lives. I vow to not just hear, but listen to you. And I vow to earn your trust every day. And I vow to build love with you every day. Not bad. Okay, it's all right. Alyssa takes her vows out of her bra. And then, yes, my note is she rushes through them. To my husband, thank you for signing up for this crazy adventure with me. I love animals. I jump out of a moving car to save a dog. I've got to be honest, wear my heart on my sleeve and treat each and every day as a new adventure. Okay, done. (laughs) Time. Yep. All right. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, this is the Daytona Speedway. <laughs> yeah, she sounded like an auctioneer. I love animals. I hear animals. I love animals. I jump out of a big car to say, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest here. Like, what are we doing? What? Wait, all right. That was pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Storage wars. <laughs> yes. So a couple of those. So they exchange rings. There's a more passionate kiss than I expected. I'll say that. I thought it was going to be a, may I kiss you? On the cheek. Yeah, I thought she's going to be like, a he- oh, hell no. Yeah. And then... Tradition in the segment, a glass is placed on the ground. They smash it. 
No mazel tov. So that, that, let me ask you this. Who's Jewish? Oh, it's her for sure. His you name think is, she's Jewish? His name is Chris. Christ. His? Uh, yeah. So he's, it, I think he's Italian. His, her mom's name, his mom's name is Florine. Yeah. He looks Italian That's too. fine, but his name is Chris. I don't know any Jew named, there was no Chris's in my Hebrew school class. I mean, it, kids nowadays can be named anything. Can no, I know, but Apple. the name Christ. I, don't, I would not really? name, I would not name our son Chris. Well, I would not either. Right. But, but not because of that. Um, yeah. So I don't, Christopher, Christopher, I don't think he's Jewish. I think she is. First time I've ever seen cowboy boots smash the glass. So that was my question. I actually thought maybe no one's Jewish and this is just another type of tradition because no one said Mazel Tov. Why are you doing That's, it if you don't say Mazel Tov? That was my only question is why no Mazel Tov? But also... She, they both did it. I thought the guy's no, supposed to do it. I just didn't let you do because I wanted to shine a little bit. But <laughs> it, it used to be just the guy. Now, more so, both couples are starting. Wait a minute. So you didn't let me do it because you wanted to shine? I didn't even want to do it. You wanted me to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You love tradition. I do love traditions. Yeah. You could have. We did the Nasravi. We did shots. True. For, for you. And then I, come on. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You but, have a cool photo of doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because I, sh- I shouted Mazel Tov afterwards. You did. Everyone did. Everyone did. Yeah. Mazel Tov. I, it was so absent from here that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never been to a non-Jewish wedding that it's happened at. So I had to imagine. True. I had to imagine Alyssa yeah. is. I feel like she just wasn't even sighed about it. She's like, I'm not even going to muzzle top this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's my guess. But they finish. They go chat over some champagne. Chris is pleased, finds her attractive. And so far, Alisa seems good with him. Yeah. I mean, they have some boilerplate conversation, name, job, disc golf, but... Yeah, she doesn't say anything forthright. No, but when we when we saw in the previews, I thought, oh my gosh, she's gonna see him at the altar, and she's just gonna be like, nope. Well, she goes, I think he looks like a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. Like, is that an insult? <laughs> it's not a used car sales. Like, Mark the shot could be a used car salesman. I think that would be an insult. But he looks like a real estate agent. He looks like a salesperson, like legit. She looks like a social media manager. Does so, she? I don't know, young, young, cute girl. Yeah. I don't know. No, she's not young. She's not cute. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the young cute girl would be someone who does social media at the age of 22. Yeah. How old is she? 30. Mm. Okay. All she's right. She's youngish. I mean, I'm a youngish, but let's be honest. We're all getting there. Oh, we're getting there. Okay. So they go to take pictures. That diva is coming out because Alyssa's like, I'm not going to take your direction. Well, you forgot. When Chris shared his passion about this Oh, stuff. how could I forget? How tr- could you? I'm trying to forget. <laughs> because they're talking jobs and Alisa does social media for a construction company. Okay. So that's her job. Chris is a real estate agent. He looks like it, apparently. Alisa loves horses. She wants a horse. And Chris loves disc golf. And Alisa was just not really interested. He's so proud. He's like, I'm like the vice president of my neighborhood disc <laughs> golf association or whatever he said. He's Listen, so he proud He has hobbies. It. Like, who cares? Yeah, That's good. Good to have hobbies. You mention it once and move on. That was the first time he mentioned it. I guess. He's told everyone else. He's got to tell her. Well, he's proud of it. Come on. Okay. All right. So they take pictures. Chris takes pictures. Alyssa just kind of stands there. She's not super touchy. She doesn't want to um, really do this because that's not her style. <laughs> yeah. Can we Photoshop him out of this later? Because like, this is a beautiful backdrop, <laughs> but I, I do need a new Tinder picture. But Chris likes her bluntness. Is he colorblind? This is a red flag. He goes, uh, I love how blunt she is. No red flag so far. You're colorblind, Chris, right? Because these are she all. is a red flag. These are all red flags. Yeah. <sighs> they sit down for dinner. They start talking about the process. Alyssa's like, you know, I felt like I dated everyone. It didn't work. So why not try something else? And we hear the clink, 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 clink. But Alyssa's not going to do this. It's just too much. 
No. She's not going to kiss him. Chris is like, this is the best first date ever. <laughs> Chris, how? Who, um, I felt bad Can for we him. see your other first dates? Because this is a terrible first date. He's like, I hope I'm her type. This is amazing. Oh, <sighs> yeah. And so Alyssa's like, so my friends were asking, I'm like, what if you don't want to live in my town? And I said, I don't really care what he thinks. Wait, what? Chris is like, noted. Uh, I'm sure there's a Frisbee golf team in Situate. Oh, uh, I can find us a house. <laughs> oh, yeah. But she also says like, well, I can't say we're going to be together forever. It's like, dude, you're on the show. At least that's realistic. It is, but you just mar- you just married him. Just give it a shot before right. you make any assumptions. Right. Start off on the right foot. Don't start off like, yeah, may not make it. Yeah. Be hopeful. So Chris goes to talk to Alyssa's mother and Chris asks, has uh, she said anything good about me yet? What did she say? Tell me what she said. Tell me what she said. Mom's like, uh, hmm, let me think. Uh, oh, yeah, when we danced, I said I liked you. And she said, I guess me too. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, well, uh, if she says anything else about me, make sure to tell me. Yeah, and I thought, okay, it's fine. He asked the mom, but he's going to ask everyone. He's going to ask everyone. So, yeah, yeah do man. That, like, come on, ask Just her. Give her two hours. She's going to give you the answer. So then mom warns Chris again how stubborn she is. And Chris is like, okay, well, what's a bad day look like for her? And how can I help? And mom goes, best thing would be just to stay away. Just leave her alone. Don't talk to her and you guys will be okay. <laughs> How little mom knew she was right, probably. It's going to be a great relationship. Stay away. Don't talk to her. You guys will work out great. And Alisa s- was still surprised why she's still single. Yeah. That's <laughs> why. So then Alyssa goes to talk to Chris's friends and asks Alyssa's first impression of Chris. And Alyssa's like, first impression... I don't know. Very kind vibe. She took a, she took a sweet time, and friends are just like staring at her. Yeah, a uh, kind kind vibe. At least she didn't say it looks like a real estate agent. But whatever the friends said next, uh, it wasn't making her very uh, happy because apparently make, he likes to correct and teach people. This but didn't it make comes, me happy. It at comes all. from a good place. Chris is naturally a teacher. Uh, he likes to bring out the best in people. So if he comes across condescending, he's just trying to teach you. He just he just wants you to become the best frisbee golfer you can be. <laughs> you know, it's really helped me with my game, and I learned it's all in the wrist. Okay, so don't be upset. Just take the information, and we'll be all, we'll be all better from it. Listen, you do like to correct. I do like to correct. You do it to me. I do correct you if you do something wrong. Which sure. I wish it was more often. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but I think it's natural. I just don't think the friends should have said it. It's like so something you'll figure it out. Yeah, and the way they said it. Yeah. It's like, That's too much. It's clearly an issue. Like if they had that whole speech, mm-hmm. it's clearly an issue. So then we cut to Chris talking to Alyssa's friends. And of course it's, does she like me? Does she like me? Ah. Relax, bro. Yeah. Relax. But friends think Chris is great and they think he's great for Alyssa. So they really hype up his hopes. Chris is going to send out like a Google poll to the entire wedding party after the wedding. Like, you guys think she likes me? Yes or no? Please mm-hmm. vote and send it back within 24 hours. Oh, as a salesman, I'm sure he loves spreadsheets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so here we go. They leave the wedding in the bed of an antique truck. I have to say this. It's fun, but this whole thing was about Alyssa. Right. She right? loves the country. Yeah. She loves. It was all, where, like, someone should have threw a disc golf exactly. at them or right. something. Instead of rice. They, yeah. Hey, it's the only bed they're going to be sharing. So enjoy the bed <laughs> of the truck while you can, Chris. Because we cut. And Chris is sitting outside, like, the hotel lobby or something, mm-hmm. alone. And you just hear Alyssa having a meltdown with a producer. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like she didn't act on this. Like she seemed fine with him. And now she's just like telling the producers she hates pushovers. And what the friends told her, she just, she cannot get over it. And Chris said something in the elevator too. And that's the end. She's 
way too invested in the television aspect of this and not the relationship aspect because, again, she's been aware of the cameras since minute one. She will be later. We saw that. She goes to the producers Mm -hmm. to tell her fears about Chris when you should be going to Chris. She's all in on the TV side of it and not embracing her new partner in the relationship. But I think she thought this is not going to be on cameras. I think she thought talking to the producers is just like she needed to vent, right? Right, right? Meanwhile, the mic is on. So we hear it all. And she says... Oh, I don't see anything in him that I asked for. Like, this is a disaster. I don't see one characteristic that I like about him. What? It's like you just met him. She says, I don't want to share a room with him. So the producer's like, "Uh, maybe you should go tell Chris that. So she comes out. She sits down. She's like, I'm sorry for making you sit here. It's like, how long was he sitting there, that poor guy? I don't know. She's like, some things you said don't sit right with me. Which sounds like a cop out to me. Like, what mm-hmm. did he say? You know, he seemed very nice, yeah. innocent, sweet. Unless he's some creep no, off camera. I think, I think she made up her mind before. Yeah. And so when you make up your mind about someone and that person just can say like, oh, I don't like brown. You can be like, oh my gosh, I cannot be with a person who doesn't like brown right. color. Like right. Something the really silly. Him. Something very silly. Just like. It rubs you, if you don't yeah. like that person, any little thing they do yeah. is going to rub you the wrong way. Yeah. So he's like, I'm sorry. Like I had a good day. And she's like, I think we should just get some sleep. And she gets up and she walks away. I'm curious if they're going to wake up in the same room. Oh, no. Chris is going to be playing with his disc tonight. <laughs> There's not a chance. Come on. There's not a chance. And that's Uh, where it ends. That's where it ends. Ah! It was a good episode, guys. It was so good. Love this season. Love this show. Love Mm -hmm. talking about it. Hopefully you guys do. If you guys want to talk about it with us, follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Slide into our DMs. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Message us, guys. Once again, we apologize for the delay. But hey, I hope you enjoyed this because we sure did. Love talking about this together in the same room. It's always the most energy. Yeah, Alyssa and Chris <laughs> may not want to share a room, but we always want to share a room. Always. So make sure you're following the Instagram. Make sure you're following the pod. So easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Yeah, guys. Smash it like it's as hot as this episode was. Woo! And we can't wait what's coming next because the previews were spicy. Yes. So thank you guys again for the reviews. If you haven't left one, please do. And that's it. I think I said it all. Have you said it all? I've said it all. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.